Oh, Tim and I have been trying to tell you guys, seems like the only people listening is our subscribers. And this is one of the major kryptonites of the economy. And it's starting to get a little bit of attention, but I just don't understand how this is not one of the main topics of conversation. This would be like the equivalent to walking in a room with a whole bunch of people and there's an elephant over in the corner. Said not one person mentions or acknowledges the elephant in the room. Like not one person would be like, what the f is that elephant doing here? Or at least look at the darn thing and be like, oh, that's an elephant. That's like the interest payments on our national debt right now. And that is the elephant being ignored in the room. People are just walking by the elephant and just going, like, unbelievable. Meanwhile, I've been like, holy f that's an elephant right there. What the hell is that thing doing here? Like, I want to pet that thing. I mean, I'd want some type of interaction with it, right? By the way, make sure you subscribe. I don't have anyone else besides Tim and my subscribers to talk about elephants with, and I need more cool, weird people in my life. So, topic at hand. Interest payments on debt just surpassed our national security expenses. Man, Joe Biden kind of looks like the devil here, doesn't he? Or he looks like he's majorly constipated or possibly about to have a heart attack. It's one of those three things. That picture is not doing you so well, Joey. But you can see this article states, the U.S. is now spending more in gross interest on treasury debt securities than it does on national defense. This, of course, is according to the Treasury's latest monthly statement. So if we go to the official treasury.gov website, they have a breakdown of all the national expenses. And we can see that our top three expenses are social security at 25%, and we have national debt at 19%, and then net interest at 16%. Net interest is starting to pass national defense. Net interest is right around the corner of being 20% our expenses. That means that essentially 20% of the tax dollars we get taxed go to interest. And I know a lot of you are probably aware of this. If you're here on our channel, you're fairly educated. But a majority of that interest we're paying is because of the mistakes and the greed of the Fed, the banks, and Congress. And really, I'm being nice here. I shouldn't even say mistakes. The negligence. I mean, they're costing us this money because of their actions. And what's even worse is this number is just going to keep going up. 20% is not anywhere near the top. The top is the number when the system finally breaks. And make no mistake, I mean, the system is already broken, but I'm talking about when the system actually falls apart. You want to hear something scary? Interest is currently the fastest growing part of the federal budget. Why don't you just marinate on that for a second? It's the one thing in our federal budget that gives us zero return is our fastest growing expense. The one thing that gives us absolutely nothing in return for the money spent is the fastest growing expense. It grew from $221 billion in 2013 to $345 billion in 2020. It's nearly doubled to $659 billion in 2023. And to make it worse, all of that was with the interest rates being extremely low for most of those years. So we go back to the original article. We can see they say the following. The fiscal year starts on October 1st. In the first month, the Treasury shelled out $88.9 billion in its interest on its debt securities, while the Department of Defense spent $83.4 billion on military programs. So, if I get out my calculator here and we do 88.9 times 12, we are on pace to spend over a trillion dollars in interest over the next years. A trillion dollars! Good job, Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen, Ben Bernanke, Alan Greenspan, Paul Volcker, all the way down the list to Mr. Daniel Christensen. Y'all know what you were doing and you know what you did and you're a major reason why we're here. The article also states, the federal debt squeezes out other debts in the economy. There's only so much money in the economy and so with the government borrowing such large amounts, there's only so much that people are willing to lend overall in the economy so it pushes out other other types of borrowing. Exactly. Look, there's a reason Tim and I have been harping on this for so long. The more money we are spending on interest payments, the less money we have to spend elsewhere. And newsflash, we already don't have enough money. The national deficit was $1.7 trillion this year. That means we spent $1.7 trillion more than we had. So here's the major problem. We're trying to complete a marathon in a hamster wheel. So picture a person and they're in a hamster wheel. What happens when they start walking or even running? The wheel moves, but the person goes nowhere. And we're going and we're going and we're going, but we're not 
moving. So pretty soon, you know what's going to happen? They're going to start cutting expenses in other essential areas like education and healthcare and infrastructure. They're likely going to try to increase taxes somehow, but we already get taxed out the ass. Add the amount they're taxing us with inflation, and most people can't afford to live anymore. They can barely afford to live now. Oh, yeah, let's talk about inflation. Inflation. No, everyone can feel the inflation. Everyone's noticing how quickly the prices of things are rising. And I know they're saying 4% right now, but we all know it's higher because inflation is so high. That's why interest rates are going up to fight the inflation. But because interest payments are up and are likely staying up or even rising, that means the interest payments on our national debt are just going to keep growing faster. Joy. What that means is we're basically in an unsustainable debt cycle. We are going to be talking a lot more about this and what you should be doing right now to protect yourself. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go over on to italianeconomy.org and sign up to our free newsletter. Tim and I got you covered.